And now, get ready to smile again with radio's home folks, Vic and Say. Written by Paul Reimer and brought to you each weekday by the makers of Crisco. Well, sir, it's a few minutes past ten o'clock as we enter the small house halfway up in the next block now. And here in the living room, we find Mr. and Mrs. Victor Gook abiding quietly at home. Vic has spent the evening immersed in volume seven of his large library, and he's reading absorbedly in his easy chair. Sadie seated on the Davenport, making some flimsy feminine garment or other. And at last, a long silence is broken. My stars, is it that late? Fire murderers, thieves. What's the trouble? Clock says five past ten. It does, does it? How about that clock? Tick-tock, tick-tock. Oh, so you say tick-tock, tick-tock, do you? I'm liable to go fetch a sledgehammer and rend you with sundry. Well, I didn't think it was any more than 8.30 or quarter to 9. Where'd the time go to? Well, we ate later than usual. Mm-hmm. Where do you suppose that boy of ours is? Why, well, M.C., watching the fat men play handball. Not this late. <laughs> they started at 7 o'clock. Fat men would be worn to a frazzle by now. Goodness, if the fat... Hark, Huh? I hear the patter of tiny feet. Who is that, Robert? Yeah. Come on in, Robbers. We're just about to cut a watermelon. I'm going to bed directly. I'm not. I'm fresh as a daisy and ready for any wild escapade. I'm no lazy bone. Fine talk from a fellow that took a two-hour nap on the Davenport before supper. I wouldn't be Be tired either. How do you do? Hi. Julia. Don't we have a deadline established for you, my man? Ten o'clock. Have you met that deadline? It's only a few minutes after. Only a few minutes after, eh? Isn't you reckoning on the fast and loose order and very sloppy? In my opinion, ten o'clock means ten o'clock on the head, not a single second after. There's a little story they tell that a fellow to go. Oh, you don't Really? Nah. Sadie, speak to this wicked boy. He's incorrigible. Ten o'clock does mean ten o'clock, Willie. Okay. See? You brought tears to your mother's eyes with your careless, inconsiderate ways. Uh-huh. Tears to your father's eyes, too. <laughs> I don't know if this is a thing to make fun of. Oh, it's only ten minutes past ten or so, Ma. I'll watch it after this. You weren't watching the fat men play handball all evening. No, Vernon Peggles and myself left the YMCA around nine. It began to get dull. Thin fellas started to play. There's no kick in seeing thin fellas slap a handball around. Uh. From the YMCA, Vernon and myself strolled over to the Greeks. Been there ever since. Greeting your many friends and spending good money on a flock of lemon phosphates, I'll wager. Cherry phosphates, Gov. I work so hard to bring in a living, and every time I manage to accumulate a nickel, my wild, profligate, harem scaring boy revels in cherry Let me tell you about this, Gov. It's mighty, mighty interesting. Oh, sure. Alibis and excuses. Alibis and excuses. I want you to listen also, Ma. All right. In at the Greek's confectionery. Vernon Peggles and myself were urged to drink all the cherry phosphates we could swallow absolutely free. Well, Greek go out of his head or something? Rooster Davis's big brother, Rotten. What about him? He was treating all comers to free cherry phosphates. Any innocent bystander that happened to drop in the confectionery was invited to step right up and drink their fill. Has Rooster Davis's big brother, Rotten, grown suddenly wealthy? In a way, I guess. Mm. Rotten Davis is a difficult individual to figure out. Some people like him and some people don't. Most of the time, I like him. And then there's occasions when I think he's kind of a nitwit. He always struck me as kind of on the simple side. He strikes a large part of the American public that way. Like in the Bajo movie show the other evening. The way he carried on for a fella, what is he, 20? Be 20 his next birthday. 20 is almost a grown-up man. What did you do in the movie show, Steve? You saw him. He comes striding down the aisle wearing a fur coat and chewing a big cigar and hollered at everybody he recognized in the audience and laughed that ha-ha-ha laugh and tried to attract everybody's attention. Oh, that big, awkward, lubberly half-wit. That was rotten. He's growing since I saw him last. Rotten is five feet eight inches tall now. Was he wearing spats and a derby hat in the by Joe Mom? Well, I never noticed the spat. He wears a different colored one on each ankle. Such a rude, noisy, look-at-me-everybody sort of fella. Why, coming down the aisle there, whenever he'd spot somebody he was acquainted with, he'd walk over and punch him. That's rotten. That's rotten. You don't uh, associate with him much, do you? No. 
Oh, he plays baseball over in Tatman's vacant lot a good deal, but as a rule, he don't bother spending any time to speak of with 14-year-old guys like myself. You're beneath his notice, huh? That's right. I'm beneath his notice. Mm. I couldn't expect to chum around with a fella going on 20 years old, 5 feet 8 inches tall, and wearing spats and derby and smoking big, strong nickel cigars. Mm. No, you take the bulk of the American public, they're divided on what they think of Rotten Davis. Some admires him, some dislikes him. How do you stand? Well, I've been on the fence pretty much, but starting from tonight, I believe I'm going to admire him. Because he give you free cherry phosphate? He give everybody free cherry phosphate. People, Rotten Davis has done a very remarkable thing. What's he done? He has acquired a whole barrel of cherry syrup. Mm -hmm. Oh? The Greek makes your cherry phosphates out of cherry syrup, you know. He throws in some cherry syrup, and then some charged water, and then a few drops of phosphate. The cherry syrup is the main ingredient. Mm -hmm. Rotten Davis has acquired a whole barrel of that cherry syrup. How? Well, the Greek ordered a big batch of... Excuse me. Ordered a big batch of merchandise from the wholesale house, and this barrel of cherry syrup was included by mistake. The Greek made the remark in the hearing of Rotten Davis that he didn't want it and couldn't use it. Rotten got together with the Greek. For an undisclosed amount, he bought that barrel of cherry syrup. Oh. Uh, it'll be kept right there in the store. Whenever Rotten feels like a phosphate, all he has to do is stop past and order the Greek to stir one up. That's in the agreement. Rotten is quite a sport. Isn't he, though? People can laugh and snort and guffaw at Rotten Davis all they please, but show me anybody else on the face of the earth that keeps their own barrel of cherry syrup in a confectionery store, and they've got enough cherry phosphates on hand to last them nine lifetimes. How big is the barrel? Fifty gallons. My boy, it's enough to make your head swim. You only put a little dinky squirt of syrup in a phosphate. How much of a phosphate is syrup, would you say, Mom? Oh, gollies, I wouldn't know. Well, you and Miss Stemba, I'm drink them all the time, don't you? Oh, I wouldn't say all the time. A couple times a week, anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, you've watched the Greek. How far does the syrup generally come up in the glass before he tosses in the water and ice and junk? Oh, maybe a quarter of the way. Oh, no. Well, <laughs> how far up would you say? A fifth, if that. All right, a fifth. Gov, figure this out for me. The syrup in a five cent phosphate only comes up a fifth of the way in the glass. Don't that mean, then, that with a given amount of syrup, you get five times as much phosphate? You seem to be figuring it out all right by yourself. No, but check my figures. I'd say your figures are correct. You catch on to the overwhelming significance of the thing, then, don't you? I don't. Rotten has 50 gallons of syrup. 50 gallons of syrup translated into actual phosphates served across the counter amounts to five times 50 gallons. Or... 250 gallons. Good. 250 gallons of cherry phosphate. You open unbelievable vistas of miraculous now, wealth. Now, Gov, how many cherry phosphates does it take to make a gallon? Uh, that's a branch of practical mathematics. Well, we can I've figure it out. Reached. We can make an estimate. Reduce it from gallons <clears throat> down to quarts, from quarts down to pints. Now, how many five cent phosphates would you say made up a pint liquid measure? Oh, gee. Go on, guess. Oh, golly. Go on, guess. Hey, who do you think you're ordering around? Oh, this is so exciting, man. Oh, boy. Hey, just give a rough estimate. Think now. Remember all the times you and Miss Stembottom have watched the Greeks stir up a phosphate. How many of them little phosphate glasses would it take to fill up a pint milk bottle, would you say? Oh, three or four, maybe five. Oh, three or four, maybe five. Man, that's ridiculous. Oh, it is, is it? Well, look, mister, don't you use that tone with your mother. My six. Side. Six at the very least. All right. Now, but... we can really make ourselves dizzy. Go. I'm right here. Don't hit me. Six cherry phosphates make a pint of cherry phosphate. Yeah. A quart. Twelve cherry phosphates. A gallon. Forty-eight cherry phosphates. Two hundred and fifty gallons. Oh, wait a minute now, Dr. Sleech. I need a pencil for this. <laughs> Ain't it bewildering, Mom? Yeah, yeah. You ought to have seen Rotten Davidson at the Greeks a while ago. Was he drinking cherry phosphates? By the dozen. He's going to be so sick. And his friends were drinking cherry phosphates by the dozen. I drank five myself. So did Vernon Pegel. And was the Greek lining them up, perspiring like a butcher. He's going <coughs> to be so sick <coughs> of cherry phosphates. Rotten Davis was sitting there like a king. When a new innocent bystander walked in the screen door there, Rotten just waved his hand airy and careless, and the Greek had tried out another glass. 
I never saw anything like it. Mm -hmm. It was tremendous. Mm -hmm. Boy. 12,000. What? 48 times 250 is 12,000. 12,000? Yep. Rotten Davis owns 12,000 cherry phosphate. Mm. 12,000 cherry phosphate. Mm. And there's a portion of the American public that don't think Rotten Davis is a sport. Mm. And there's a portion of the American public that don't think Rotten Davis is a sport. Mm. 